In this DSM demo video, I will go through the output of several dynamic multi-level models and discuss how to relate the parameter estimates back to the path diagram that represents the model that we're estimating, and also the regression equations. It's a follow-up on a previous video in which I discussed the input for these models, so if you are not totally sure, you might want to go back to that first. So the model we're looking at first is a model in which we have repeated measures of two variables, the variable closeness, so how are you, close are you feeling to your partner right now, and tension, how much tension was there in your relationship today. Now these variables are measured repeatedly in um, a large sample of individuals, and they are therefore decomposed. Uh, so we have the observed variables here, they are decomposed into a between-person part, so that's a stable mean for each individual on the variable closeness and tension. These between-person components can then be further modeled at the between-person level. And there's also a temporal deviation at every occasion from this mean, uh, for every person separately. And this is referred to as the within-person component, and these are then modeled at the within-person level. And this is where we can have uh, regressions, so for instance, a closeness today, or right now is actually modeled uh, um, or regressed on tension uh, experienced today. But we can also have the lagged relationship. So closeness today is also regressed on closeness yesterday, so t minus 1. And tension today is regressed on tension yesterday, but also closeness yesterday. We can represent these um, uh, or these, these relationships also using uh, regression equations. So we have closeness at the current occasion regressed on closeness at the previous occasion, but also on tension at the current occasion. So we have the autoregressive relationship here, that's this one. And we have the cross regression, that's this one. And then we can also look at tension, tension regressed on tension yesterday and closeness yesterday. So it's the autoregressive relationship here and the cross-legged uh, regression over here. There's parts of closeness and tension that cannot be predicted, that's indicated with these arrows here. These are the residuals. Here we refer to them as the zetas, and those zetas come from a multivariate normal distribution with means of zero, and this is their covariance matrix, so they both have a variance, but there's no covariance between them because there's no two-headed arrow here between the residuals. At the between-person level, we have the components from the decomposition, so the means on the two uh, variables per person. And for these, we will be estimating the uh, ground means, so the gammas over here. We don't see them in our path diagram, but uh, they are going to be part of the output. And there's individual deviations from these means, and these then are assumed to come from a multivariate normal distribution with means of zero, and what we estimate is the variances of these um, residuals and their covariance. Covariance is this covariance here, the variances could be indicated here with two-headed arrows. When we look at the output, at the parameter estimates, we first see a part referring to the within-person level. Um, let's go through this step by step. So first we have closeness regressed on closeness at the preceding occasion. So this uh, autoregressive relationship is referring to this arrow over here. And tension um, at the same occasion. So that's this arrow over here. So we can actually just fill in these numbers for those um, arrows in our path diagram. Uh, when we move to the second part of the output, again, these are the on statements. So these are regressions, one-headed arrows in our path diagram. We see the autoregressive one and the cross-legged regression. So these are then the parameter estimates that we can fill in in our path diagram. And what we see is that the autoregressions are both positive, so higher closeness yesterday is um, carried over into today, leading to higher experiences of closeness also today. The same is true for tension. And when we look at the cross-legged, uh, or the cross and the cross-legged uh, regressions, we see that uh, when a person experience, ex experienced more tension, in their relationship today, 
they tend to feel less close to their spouse right now. It's a negative relationship. And also if they were feeling very close to their partner yesterday, they tend to feel less or experience less tension in their relationship today. These numbers can also be filled in in the regression equations as just a different way of representing the same information. The last part of the output for the within level um, is about the residual variances. So here we have the residuals, the zetas. We also see them over here uh, in our path diagram. And what we estimate is their variances. So the parameter here and here. We can fill in those numbers in our path diagram. If we want to include it in the regression equations, basically what we have to add is this part where we say the residuals come from a multivariate normal distribution with these with means of zero. And then uh, these are the variances on the diagonal of the covariance matrix of these residuals. When we move to the between person level, this is uh, the output that we find. So we have the with statement. It's about the covariance between um, the between person components. We also get the means and the variances. So again, let's go through this step by step. So the between uh, uh, level covariance is about the means that people have on closeness. So the individual differences in that and how these are then related to the individual differences in the means on tension. And what we see is um, that there is a negative relationship between the two. So individuals who have a high average on closeness tend to have a low average on tension and vice versa. But we cannot really say anything about the strength because this is just a covariance, it's not a correlation. So if we would want to know about the correlation, we would have to go to the standardized results, which I will discuss in a different video. Um, when we look at the regression equations, uh, where it ends up is over here. So it's for the residuals, they come from a multivariate normal distribution. This is the covariance matrix of those residuals. And this is then uh, the off diagonal element is the covariance between those residuals. We see the second part here is about the means. The means are not included in the path diagram but they are included in our regression equations. It's the gammas that we see over here. Sometimes people refer to these as fixed effects, but um, yeah, that terminology is used very differently across different disciplines, so it can be very confusing. So I'll just refer to it as the means here. Um, and we can fill in those numbers, um, and this is basically just what it is. And finally, we have the part with the variances. So these are reported here, the variances. We can include them in our path diagram like this. So it's a two headed arrow to a variable itself. And these are then the values that those parameters take on. It's the variances of these residuals here. And we can fill them in in our covariance matrix here as the diagonal elements. If we then move to a second model, um, where we allow for random effects at the within person level. This is what we uh, see. So we see that all the on statements here, all the one headed arrows now have a black or filled circle. So these indicate that these parameters take on a different value for different individuals. So it's a random parameter now, rather than that it's the same parameter for each individual. And this is indicated in the input with the vertical bar. So all the on statements now have this vertical bar here and then a name. So we, we give those parameters an actual name. And uh, what we see is that, for instance, uh, this, this filled circle here for the autoregression from closeness, so phi CL, it becomes an open circle at the between person level, implying that it's a latent variable over here. And then we can further model this at the between person level using um, the other uh, variables that we have at the between person level. We also do this for the residual variances. So the residual variances here now also have this filled circle. And these are now related to the logs of the residual variances at the between person level. 
Why the log? Well, because here we allow all these variables to come from a multivariate normal distribution. Now, if we would do this for the variance, then we would run the risk of actually getting negative uh, values for certain individuals, and that's of course not possible. So by taking the log, we have something that can run, at least in theory, it can run from minus infinity to plus infinity, but then uh, transforming it back to the actual variances, we will have something that is always uh, larger uh, than zero or equal to zero, but it will never be negative. So that's why we are dealing with the log of the residual variances at the between level to ensure that the residual variances here are never negative. We just allow all of these things to be correlated with each other and that's what's indicated here with this uh, big arrow structure. When we look at the parameter estimates, we see that there's no parameters estimated at the um, within-person level because everything was made random. And that's, uh, we see this, all the arrows have a uh, filled circle. And also when we look at the regression equation uh, for this model at the within level, we see now that all the parameters have a subscript i, so the slopes and also the residual variances. And that indicates that uh, these are individual specific parameters and what we will be estimating is their uh, variances, means, covariances and so on at the between person level, but no parameters at the within level uh, that need to be estimated here. So we move to the between person level. This is what we get. First we get a whole bunch of uh, with statements um, and I actually um, skipped a few here. Uh, we actually uh, let's see, for instance, over here, a closeness being uh, co-varying with, um, so that's the mean of closeness from the decomposition, uh, co-varying with the autoregressive parameter of closeness um, and also the other uh, random effects in our model. When we look at it like this, uh, this is what we had before to represent that everything was allowed to co-vary with everything. Now a more truthful representation of this would be actually like this. So here it shows that every pair of random effects in our model can be correlated or can co-vary. Um, and if we look at, for instance, this particular one, so between the mean on closeness and the autoregressive parameter for closeness, it would be this two-headed arrow in our path diagram. And this is then the value that this uh, parameter takes on. It's the covariance, not the correlation again. Uh, when we move on, we get the means. The means are not included in our path diagram, but they are indicated here with the gammas in our regression equation. So it's the, the means actually of all the different random effects or person-specific effects. And so we can fill in, for instance, uh, the first two. You see this ground mean here for the mean on closeness, and this is then the ground mean on tension. So uh, the order might be somewhat different than what we want to uh, use or that uh, how we have represented it. So it's important to always uh, keep track of that. Um, we also get the variances, and they, we see them over here. So the variances, we can include them in our path diagram. It's the two-headed arrows of a variable towards itself at the between level. So for instance, this is the variance, individual differences in the mean on closeness. We can also look at individual differences in the autoregressive parameter. It will be necessarily always quite a small variance for a parameter like this. Um, and we also see the covariance here, which we saw before based on the with statements. We can also include these numbers then in the covariance matrix for the residuals. So we have the variances on the diagonal and then the off diagonal elements are all the with statements that we see in the output at the between level. Now there's one aspect in the output that I want to uh, give some extra attention here. And that's this one. So we are looking at the means again. We see the one for the log of the residual variance of closeness. We see it's a number close to zero. And what we especially notice is that the credibility interval actually covers zero. 
So for this parameter, we would say there's not really evidence that it differs from zero. Now, it's important to realize that we are talking about the log of the residual variance, so not the var residual variance itself. We're not saying that the residual variance uh, is on average zero. It's the log of the residual variance that is on average uh, zero. It's this parameter over here. So there's still individual differences possible. Um, so we can fill in this number here. If we take the um, uh, exponential of this, we actually get a, a number that's very close to one. So actually the average is very close to one the, for the residual variance. If we move back to the variance rather than the log of the variance. We also have individual differences in it that's um, uh, indicated with this um, part here, with the subscript i. If we move to the variances, this is the value that we see for the um, residual, uh, the, the variance of the log of the residual variances. It's uh, quite uh, a thing to talk about. What, what it means is we have this residual here, it comes from a normal distribution with a mean of zero, and this, this is the standard deviation. It's the square root of the variance. And to get a better sense of what this means in terms of what do the individual differences in this residual variance look like, because I'm not so much interested in the log of the residual variance, but actually the residual variances, I just simulated some data using this mean and this standard deviation. And then I actually um, took the exponential of this, and this is what the distribution looks like. So what you notice here is that indeed the mean is very close to one across all the individuals. Um, and we see also that all the residual variances are larger than zero, which is exactly why we are dealing with the log rather than uh, the variances at the between person level. We also see it's a bit of a skewed distribution. That's also what you would expect for this. Um, but this is uh, a way to, to get a better sense of what the results represent when we are talking about the log of the residual variances and how these are distributed at the between person level.